Right. All right, guys, welcome back to the bluegrass on this unseasonably cool June day. Uh, it was so cold when we got up this morning that I had Eli go start all the motorcycles and four-wheelers, the mower, and then all my vehicles because we're trying to create a mini global warming effect right here in Winchester, kind of warm up my property. Look, it seems to be working. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, Eli, that was a good job. You know, hey, we're in cold country here, so we're pro coal, we're pro carbon in the atmosphere. We're trying to bring the dinosaurs back and everything. But <laughs> so if you don't like that, you can stop watching this right now. Uh, but what we're going to talk about today, actually, we have two things we're talking about today. One, we're doing a science experiment with a cooler cover. A guy tried to talk me into buying a $300 cooler, and I said, I think I can get those same results with uh, uh, some uh, Reflectix I have around here. So check out that video. But we're getting back to answering some email questions. And the reason, I think we're going to start making this a weekly occurrence because I've, I've had a few videos where I talk about Eli looking through the emails. And uh, so we're, now we're getting flooded with email, emails directed towards Eli. Hey, Eli. Eli, try to get Stoney to talk about this. And uh, sometimes that works. Sometimes I listen to Eli. What he came up with this week, uh, <laughs> he's laughing because he knows I really don't ever listen to him, right? <laughs> okay. So let's take a look at uh, the topic Eli's picked for the week. Uh, in my hand, I have uh, four or five pages of excerpts from emails that we receive, and all of them concern one way or another to whether a person should acquire a Malinois or the types of problems that people are having with Malinois, okay? And uh, so now, I gotta be honest with you, I'm not a real big expert on Malinois. You know, when you go back and you watch the very beginnings of this channel, and I'm training lots of Malinois, you know, I've been around the breed for a long time, and I have had dozens, and I have trained hundreds. But as far as being a, like a really a world-renowned expert, on bloodlines, on the history, on all the, you know, all the specific breed differences between Dutch Shepherds, German Shepherds, Belgian Shepherds, the variations of Belgian Shepherds, the Lacanois, the Malinois, the Traverne, all that. Listen, I, I have a real good general understanding, uh, but am I a super expert? No, not a super expert. Do I have a pretty good, un a pretty good, like lockdown on what it's like to train that type of dog? Yeah, I, I do. You know, because if you think about what's really going on there, is uh, all the way up to the late 1800s, you had kind of a, hey, come here, come on, come on. You had kind of a general basic type of herding dog. Come here, bicycle. Uh, you know, in 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 that area. Um, uh, the Netherlands, Belgium, northern France, Germany, okay, and uh, it was just a general type of herding dog, and so they had like a, a real similar physical appearance, they had a very similar breed specific tendencies, very specific what's called a behavioral confirmation. In other words, they all kind of looked the same and they all kind of acted the same, and what were they? They were herding dogs, they were general purpose farm dogs, and what do you need out of a farm dog? You know, you, you need to have a farm dog, he hangs around the farm, and as he grows up, he makes a list of the things that belong on the farm and the things that don't belong on the farm. He also makes a list of where the things on the farm should go, right? So what's his job? His job is to keep order and to keep the things on the farm safe and to keep things that, that he didn't grow up with off the farm. And that's pretty much true amongst all those different types of dogs, all the Belgian Shepherds, German Shepherds, and Dutch Shepherds, okay? And then all the variations. But now, if you want to get real specific about the history, you're going to have to ask a real expert. If, if you want to get real specific about the bloodlines and, like, you know, what's the best dog, you're going to have to, to, to contact somebody like Mike Suttle. You know, all of my friends that have had these kind of dogs, like, all of our dogs have always been of somewhat questionable heritage. Okay, now what you hear over there in the distance is uh, a Malinois puppy, and it's what they do. They bark, right? And they chase, and they bite, and they, you know, they do all the things that uh, are aggravating. And, but then on the other side, then they're really good at stuff. They learn, you know, people ask me, hey, Stoney, should I get it? You know, because what they do is they think in terms of, you know, what are the good qualities of the dog? Well, listen, they're awesome. I mean, when they're being awesome, they're awesome. They're uh, a, a nice, medium-sized dog, it's easy to get in the truck. They have a natural tendency towards uh, uh, learning patterns. They're very pattern cognizant. They live a long time. They're pretty healthy. They're very agile and uh, uh, are physically suited for doing a wide variety of sporting activities. Okay, But there are some problems with them. Let's walk up here to the Small Challenges course, and uh, I'll walk a few. And while I'm walking a few, I'll talk to you about the differences. Okay, Because when you, you, know, when you ask me, should I buy a Malinois, like, guys, they're way different. Remember what I was just telling you about people like me that uh, know a lot about Malinois and Dutch Shepherds and German Shepherds and Belgian Shepherds and all the variants? Uh, when I say all the variants, I mean there's lots of variants, you know? 
I mean, uh, really a Malinois, like strictly a Malinois, kind of ought to just be fawn with a black mask. I mean, there's, you know, when you look at specific breed clubs, they have what are called breed standards. And if a dog falls outside of that breed standard, it's no longer considered one of those dogs. Okay, uh, and uh, so like there's a lot of variation in here. So it's it's not so much should you buy a Malinois. Uh, that's kind of the general question. Do you want a dog that has this this kind of general physical um, uh, build to it, but also behavioral? They have a general set of behavioral tendencies. But there's a lot of variation in that. And I mean, when I say a lot of variation, I mean a lot of variation. So it's not just should I buy a Malinois, it's should I buy a Malinois from this particular bloodline because that makes all the difference in the world, guys. What's important to me or one of my friends as it relates to breeding dogs, uh, it's, 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 it's completely different, right? You know, I've got buddies and uh, if they have a dog it's got a flop ear one flop ear you know what i'm saying and he's four different colors as long as that dog will chase and bite somebody they're perfectly happy they couldn't be tickled they couldn't any be any more tickled me i'm not having a flop ear dog <laughs> you see what i'm saying i'm not having a long-haired dog i mean it's just some things i'm not going to have um, so what's important to you? I mean, I like a dog to look good, you know, and I've had a couple of really good ones. I was about to, to roll this up before I got a chance to look. So you, if you're going to get one, like kind of watch this video and then think, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe that's something I would look into. But believe me, you got to go meet some dog breeders, meet some examples of different bloodlines. And when you meet the examples of those different bloodlines, then you'll start to understand what I mean about buying the right Malinois for you. Okay, so good points, we kind of covered them. Just a good, hearty, general purpose farm dog, guard dog. And they do great in that environment. Like out here where we are, where we can exercise them all the time, they do great. Let me read you some emails though for when they're not doing so great. And while I'm reading them, uh, I can, uh, I'll walk one. All right, so now this is Lola. And Lola is from Boca Raton or Raton, however you say that, Florida. Okay, so where she lives, all the houses are real close together and she doesn't get a lot of exercise. So, or she gets a lot of exercise, but it's not easy to exercise her. So they take her swimming and they take her to the mall and they do lots of stuff like that with her, but it's not easy. You know, it's not easy to have a dog like this. Bosco lives with Lola. It's not easy to have a dog like this and live in town because these dogs have high energy levels. They have high endurance levels and they have really quick recharge rates. Okay, and what do I mean by a recharge rate? Like, listen, you might be a great owner and take your dog out and exercise them at seven o'clock in the morning, okay? And, and some kinds of dogs, they're good till five o'clock in the afternoon. These Malinois, uh, 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 German short hairs, those kind of dogs, listen, take them out and exercise them real good at seven o'clock, and then by uh, 9.30, they're ready to go again. So, are, you know, are you ready to have the kind of dog that has the energy output the energy endurance and the quick recharge rate that a Malinois has. Hup, hup, come on. Now, there's a big variation on these dogs though. Like Lola's a pretty, I mean, she's a pretty active dog for a Malinois. But, uh, I mean, she's a pretty active dog as far as dogs go. But for a Malinois, she's not particularly active at all. It just seems like because of where she lives, it's she, she's super active, you know? Let me see if I can find another one. Hey, Ranger, come here, look. We got Ranger here. And Ranger's about 14 weeks old. Now guys, Ranger is a character, right? And Ranger, let's, let's, we'll come up here and we'll stop. We'll talk about, about dogs like Ranger for a second. Now Ranger's awesome. He belongs to a cool dude from California. All right, so let's, let's, let's just look and see what, the, what, what comes in these emails. This is kind of what we get, right? <clears throat> so we get, uh, listen, I followed you online for about a year now and I love what I see. I live in Iowa and have an eight-month-old Malinois. It's very fierce and I need help. Uh, she just nipped someone again yesterday, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, now here's another one. Uh, she'll sit uh, when she wants, 80% uh, and getting better. She'll retrieve but loves to play keep away. She's terrible on the leash, nose to the ground, pulling my arm out of socket. She also has a terrible habit that I cannot figure out. <laughs> When she's in the car, she bites the back of my neck and pulls my hair. <laughs> Listen, here's another one. I know they're energetic dogs. I'm also pretty energetic, but uh, I really wanted this puppy and I to bond. I don't feel like that's happened. Uh, he started biting me. I tried to handle it in a diplomatic way. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. He knows the commands, but he won't do them. And when I tell him to do things, he bites me. Uh, okay. 
Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, all pleasantries aside, I'm interested in bringing my two-year-old unaltered male Malinois out to Cabin Creek for some aggression rehabilitation. He's typical. He has a natural fire for working and play, and he's a great student. <laughs> it's always like that. It's all these great things, all these pleasantries, and then there's the but, the exception, the however. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he's great now this is a fantastic dog right but uh, he, he displays a lot of defensive aggressive behavior around most everyone <laughs> he's very reactive towards other dogs <laughs> uh, while I'm kind of capable of maintaining his engagement with the ball or tug when we're by ourselves uh, he consistently attacks the vet the groomer uh, and anybody that comes into my yard including other dogs okay Right. That's fine. <laughs> he's a great dog, except he's bit six or seven people and attacked some dogs. Uh, okay, I purchased a Belgian Malinois, and I've brought up a lot of dogs, but uh, <laughs> this one's nine weeks old, and she completely loses her mind and uh, uh, stops biting the tug toys and, and, and attacks my arm. Uh, <laughs> there's, okay, so I'm not going to read all four pages. I'll read one more. Uh, the, issue has, we've, the issue we have is she's very reactive to riding in a vehicle. We've watched several trainers and we're seeking advice, but we don't get the right advice. She salivates and paces back and forth. She isn't afraid to ride and she gets really excited, but... <laughs> But we, but but the problem is whenever we take her anywhere, she does everything per perfect except that uh, she's very reactive and she just bit a waitress at a patio the other day. Okay, so you start to see kind of a common thing here, you know, and I'll just kind of, you know, I won't, re I won't bore you with all these different details, right? So this is just a whole bunch of emails, and what we get is chasing bicycles, chasing scooters, biting vets, groomers, kids, cable guys, uh, you know, and that's. That's what we get. You see what I'm saying? And that's four pages, and that's just, you know, not a very long thing, probably just the last little bit of time. And we get four pages of people with these little dogs, like this, you know, and uh, what are they doing? They're chasing, they're biting, they're barking, and they're tearing stuff up. And people say, well, Stoney, I mean, like, look, why do they do that? Well, most of the time they do that just because that's what you bought. You bought a high energy, uh, high endurance, uh, quick recharge rate dog that loves to chase and bite stuff. And this is what always kind of cracks me up. Bosco, <laughs> this is what always kind of cracks me up about these uh, emails is like I ask people, I say, hey, look, take a look at your, at your liked video list. And can you tell me <laughs> kind of... Uh, you know, what's on your liked videos list as it pertains to Malinois, send me those links. And guys, it's one link after another of these dogs either jumping off of uh, 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 the things, you know, either jumping real high, climbing things, jumping off boat decks, or chasing people uh, in suits and biting them, or uh, police dog videos where the dogs have chased and, and attacked a grown man. Right, and so basically, you know, somehow people watch a thousand videos of these dogs being high energy, crazy, athletic, adventurous dogs that like to chase and bite people, and then they send me an email wondering why they have a crazy high energy dog that likes to chase and bite stuff. Okay, so so that's kind of my that's kind of my opinion on it. it, it should you buy a Malinois? Well, look, guys, I mean, if you can deal with a dog that's high energy and uh, needs a lot of physically and mentally demanding activities if you can if you can manage them properly and you want to you want to get out and you want to do a lot of fun stuff and you feel like you have a need for a guard dog uh, well you know who am I to stand in your way I would caution you though I mean if you think about when you really need a guard dog like uh, there's going to be 999 people that come to your house to do nice things for every one that's going to come to your house and do something that's not so nice. But like I said, I'm not wanting to get in the way of you having a guard dog because, uh, you know, kind of kind of how I look at it is, you know, having a having a dog that, uh, you know, bites somebody that needs biting is kind of like carrying a revolver. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. But that's based on you being a responsible, you know, person. Like, uh, it, it, there is a level of responsibility that comes with these kind of dogs that surpasses that golden doodle or that uh, white lab there, you know. And, and so let me put Bosco up here and make him stay. Get up there, dude. Ah, stay there. 
Now Bosco mine's pretty good, you know, but uh, like whereas I can just leave Penny out, like if I go in the kennel and I'm going to hang out in the kennel for a minute and work with the dog or work with the client, uh, make some coffee, whatever, I can leave Penny out, it's no problem. If I leave Bosco out, like these guys, or, or if I leave Ranger out, then what do they do, Eli? They bark. They bark and bully. That's what they do. They just they play rough, they bark, they bully, they chase, they bite. And so the level of oversight that it takes to, to watch one Malinois, I mean, I can watch 10 Golden Doodles. I mean, you know, the Golden Doodles, they can be a little aggravating. They yip and yap a little bit too much, and, and sometimes they, you know, a little hard to housebreak. But as far as having to worry about them chasing and biting some child or somebody uh, coming up here and sticking their fingers through the gate and getting nipped, I don't have to worry about it. That's something i got to worry about with these Malinois. That's why we, you know, our ratio of labs to Malinois is like 15 to 1. You know, we never let that ratio get much farther than that. Like, we like to have labs because labs, like I always say, they're the, they're the Honda Accord, the Toyota Tacoma of the dog world. So if you're in any doubt as to what kind of family dog to get, well, get a lab because they're the best, you know, for just general purpose guard, I mean, general purpose family dogs. And they bark plenty enough to be a guard dog for the most part, right? But if you feel like you need a dog like this, or if you have a particular reason, maybe you're wanting to get your dogs and you want to, you know, you want to jump off a, a dock or you want to engage in some type of uh, uh, activities that's uh, related to doing protection, <laughs> protection work. Okay, well, get you one of these dogs, but make sure that you have the time <laughs> and the resources available to properly manage the dog. So you need time, right? Uh, time because these dogs they need a lot of attention guys they're needy they'll follow you around they go to the bathroom with you and everything right okay and then facilities uh, you got to have a place to exercise them like I said Bosco and Lola they go to the whatever mall they've got there in Boca Raton <laughs> because there's just not a lot of dog friendly places in Boca you know and so like it makes it hard now luckily up, up, up. luckily you know, uh, Lola and Bosco's owners, they, uh, they, you know, they've got a lot of free time. And so it's easy for them to take their dogs to the mall. <laughs> what do you think about that, Eli? Yeah, too much free time. <laughs> now, Ranger's owner, he's uh, bought a place in Tennessee, and he's got like 30 or 40 acres. And listen, guys, if you've got you a small farm, then uh, you can't beat these kind of dogs. They're perfect. If you've got a little bit of a perimeter, they can walk around and patrol. It, it really suits their purpose because they feel like they're doing what they were, you know, hereditarily bred to do. Like, they, like, like they got them a little spot in the world, and they keep everything that's on that spot safe, and they keep everything that's not on that spot when they're little. They, they, they learn that that's not supposed to be there. So they're great at that. Like this dog, you know, he's only been here for a little while, hanging out with me, and already, like, if somebody comes up that he doesn't know, he runs up there and lets them know that they got to mind their p's and q's when they're on Uncle Stoney's property. Now I'm gonna run in and get another one, and I'll be right back. All right, so I went in and I got fishy. Uh, now, remember I was telling you guys about like picking the right Malinois, picking the Malinois that suits you. Uh, like, you know, Bosco and Lola, uh, Lola's pretty chill. Bosco, he gets a little nervous. Ranger, wherever, where's Ranger? Ranger, come here, Ranger. Now, Ranger is a, is a type of dog that, that's the type of dog that I would have or my friends would have. Real confident, real outgoing, kind of a bully, but loves to chase and bite. You know, uh, really a very masculine, for lack of a better word, dog, right? And then you have this dog, Fishy. Now, Fishy's a, Fishy's a pretty interesting dog in that, uh, like, she's pretty athletic. She's very pattern cognizant, but, man, she is quick to snap, right? And uh, so when you breed dogs that, uh, like, we got to remember when you're doing these, uh, different types of, uh, of uh, dog sports that require the dogs to, to, to like to, to launch themselves at these guys in these suits, then, then you're selectively breeding dogs that are quick to bite and they bite hard and they hold on. They show a lot of confidence, you know. But one of, the, one of the things that you'll hear about Malinois over and over and over again is that they're kind of handler aggressive. In other words, like if you fuss at them, like they'll fight you, they'll bow up on you and they'll fight you. My experience is, personally, and I, like I said, I've had a lot of them, is that they're not exactly, and it's not that some of them won't fight you, because listen, some of them will fight a bear, it doesn't matter. But what happens sometimes is like, uh, especially with traditional training, like you jerk their leash or reach down and touch their collar, and they'll kind of just almost without thinking about it, turn around and snap at you, you know? 
And then what would happen, like a guy would like correct the dog with the leash and collar, dog bite him on the leg, and then, boy, they're off to the races at that point. Because the way we used to think about dog training was all in terms of dominance. So if a dog didn't do something, they were like challenging you for social position. And, uh, but after having seen it a million times, like what I see happen more than anything else is the fact that the dogs, they just like, when they get startled, they have a tendency to snap, right? And Fishy the other day, we were doing something and uh, like uh, the dogs took off running and I didn't want them to go out of or into a pen. I can't remember what it is. And uh, right as Fishy went by, I reached out and I grabbed her leash, just like this, she had a long line on. And when I reached out and grabbed her leash, she turned around and snapped and I barely got my hand out, which you can't really see it too much now because it's been a while to see, but she tore a big old hunk of skin out of my finger and it bled, ruined a shirt. I mean, it was awful. Uh, and she, you know, I was like, Jesus. But like, uh, well, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have took the Lord's name in vain. I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize for that. But I was like, dang, you know, uh, uh, I'm getting old. You know, Eli's laughing at me because I don't have those cat-like reflexes that I used to have. And uh, so not only did I ruin a shirt and have a big, you know, plug bit out of my finger, I had to e listen to Eli talk about me getting being, getting old and being an old man, you know. So it was like a, it was like a, a lose, lose, lose situation. But uh, Eli was like, well, I mean, it, you know, it, come on, come on. Is she in trouble? And I was like, no. He said, well, but she bit you. I said, yeah, but what happened was she didn't like take a, take a moment to sit around and think, oh, Stoney's bothering me. I'm going to bite him and make him do what I want him to do. I just reached down and surprised her when I grabbed her leash and she turned around and snapped at me. And so it took me a little while to make Eli understand that. But these dogs have been selectively bred over time to uh, be real quick to bite stuff. You know, and that's why, like, I made a video a long time ago, kind of a funny video about picking a Malinois puppy where, like, I had on some uh, overalls and I just walked through these Malinois puppies and whichever one sit and whichever ones uh, would bite my leg and hold on the best, that's what that's the ones I was saying was the best dogs, you know. And uh, that's really just kind of true, guys. I mean, like, the, the, the guys that breed the competitive Malinois, about all they really care about is the dogs are fast and agile, last a long time, and have a tremendous desire to chase and bite stuff. And they put most everything else on the, second, on, on the back burner. But with those qualities, you got to be understanding. It's like if you have a really fast car, you know, you got to understand that that car might have trouble maintaining traction on a slick surface. You know, you put a lot of horsepower, put a lot of torque to the road, those tires break loose. Well, this is a dog that has a racing engine in it. You know, Ranger's a dog with a racing engine in it. And so things aren't always going to go smooth. And if you aren't a good driver, you're going to have uh, maybe a wreck now and again. And if, hopefully it won't be a big wreck, but I don't know anybody that's ever been involved with these dogs for very long that didn't end up getting bit or somebody in their family getting bit or one of their buddies getting bit. You know, I, so like if you're going to get one of these kind of dogs kind of getting bit, uh, it goes with the it, it goes with the with the territory. Right. You know, now I'm not throwing them under the bus, not claiming to be an expert, just telling you. I've had lots of them. I've trained lots of them. I get uh, tons of emails and I have buddies that have had them from all over the world, right? And the one common thing is that these dogs bite stuff, you know, and when they ain't biting, they're tearing stuff up or barking. And if you'll notice, come over here and look at Fishy's nose. See, she's got that spot on her nose, you know, that's because like, let's say that I put, uh, show them Tuck here. If I take and I tell Tuck that it's time to go up. Or if I tell Aspen that it's time to go up, because I have, because, you know, sometimes we're working on something specific. And so, like, if we're working on something specific, then uh, the dogs have to kind of wait their turn. They have to go and, and uh, like, be behind the fence. Or, you know, you'll see my exercise pins over there. If I'm out here working, and I, I'm working in the backfield with a dummy launcher, or I'm working in the backfield on doing some retrieving drills, and I put Fishy over here in the exercise pin, then she'll run up and down the line barking and attacking the fence. That's another thing you'll see with these Malinois. A good buddy of mine, I gave him the best looking dog I've ever owned in my life because uh, the dog, uh, these Malinois have a real bad tendency, like if you have them in any kind of enclosure of chewing up the enclosure or uh, 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 gnawing on it, pulling on it, especially chain link. And so I had this real, it's a beautiful dog, but like, uh, 
I just left him in a pen one day and he went crazy. I had a bitch in heat here and he uh, broke his teeth off and he had to have uh, those uh, fancy uh, uh, titanium implants, you know. And I was like, listen, I can't, I can't do bark, I can't do bite work with him. And so since I can't do bite work with him, you know, uh, cause you, you know, these things are thousands of dollars a piece, right? So if you have, have them in his mouth, you're not gonna be out, you know, sicking the dog on stuff. So I ended up giving the dog away. And now he's a wonderful dog. Uh, uh, guy that owns him, his name's Rick Stewart. And, and he's a, like, still to this day, the best looking dog I've ever owned. But that's another thing you have to watch out for. These dogs will get themselves in trouble. I mean, you think it's neat. You watch them chase and bite stuff. Well, listen, that's, that's dental repairs. They're running out. The dog weighs what it weighs. They run out, they grab and bite stuff. Sometimes they break teeth. You see them jumping off them docks. Well, that's cool when like you see them jump off a dock and it's a water. Sometimes you'll be down in the gorge or something with one of these dogs. They'll get up on a boulder and they'll just jump off. You know, won't they, Eli? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're talking, like, they just climb on a boulder, and then they'll just jump off the side of a mountain. And you're like, oh, my gosh. 99% of the time, it works out fine. But I got plenty of emails in there about Malinois and trips to orthopedic surgeons. And uh, <laughs> listen, dog orthodontics, they're expensive, and, 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 and dog orthopedic surgeons are super expensive. So when you buy these dogs, you're not just buying them. Like, you're buying the dog, and then you have to spend a lot of time, and then you might have to spend a lot of money uh, because they like to do certain things that end up breaking teeth or popping tendons or popping ligaments or, or sometimes straight breaking their bones. All right, so I'll get another one. All right, guys. Well, so here we have Trump. And if you'll notice, Trump looks very similar to the dog that I was showing you earlier, Bosco. But Trump's not a Malinois. He's a Malinois German Shepherd cross, right? Uh, Trump's mom was a Czech bred uh, German Shepherd. And she was a uh, dark sable, you know? They just kind of come out looking this way and acting this way. And uh, like I was saying, that's why earlier, if you go back and you start watching all my videos, because I'm sure, like, uh, at least some of you are going to watch this video, then go back and watch the others, and you're going to be telling me, well, Stoney, those aren't Malinois. Actually, Malinois are supposed to look... I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm just kind of using it as a catch-all term because that's just how my buddies talk, you know. Uh, so, but Trump is a cross. You know, and a lot of people are doing this now. Now, when you breed them with the German Shepherds, what we got here with Trump is his, his energy output level. It's not as quite as high as some of the mouths I've had in the past. Uh, so like exercising him, it doesn't take as long. His endurance, not quite as high. Uh, his recharge rate, not quite as high. But uh, a good thing about Trump is that his natural like tendency to be uh, to alert bark, you know, to let you know that somebody's here, it's, uh, it's a, it, it happens a little quicker and his bark is a little deeper. So he makes an excellent, uh, uh, you know, kind of general purpose farm dog, guard dog, but he wouldn't make quite as good of a sport dog because his desire to chase and bite things, you know, I mean, it's okay. It's not bad what they call drive. He's got some drive to chase and bite. He'll do, he'll do some sleeve work and stuff, but as far as getting up every day, and thinking about it like that's the most that's that's the thing that's driving him all day every day nope that's not him you know so maybe if you're thinking you want a malinois maybe you don't want a malinois that's the best malinois right because you gotta remember when you're asking these guys that breed malinois do they have the best ones well when they're telling you about having the best ones or good ones they're talking about dogs that have extreme endurance and extreme extremely high energy output rates and extreme amounts of drive so you might investigate one of these uh, German Shepherd Mal crosses. And there's various other types of crosses that you see. Or you might investigate certain bloodlines of Malinois that are not, uh, wait, that are not really uh, dedicated towards doing bite work. You know, I know that's what you like to watch on YouTube, but you just got to ask yourself, you know, do you have that kind of time? Do you have that kind of discretionary income to, to go to club every week and hire a guy to help you work and control your dog? You know, because it's not easy. It's it. It's not easy to, 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 to pay for all that stuff. It's not easy to find all the, you know, access to those type of experts, you know. Now, guys, you might be wondering, you know, if Trump's up here all the time, why haven't you seen him in more of my videos? Well, let me let you in on another secret of owning a uh, Malinois is they're not the best dog park dogs, you know. And when I say they're not the best, on average, they're just not very good at all, you know, because even when they're playing, they have such an athletic and physical advantage on other dogs that, you know, a lot of times they inadvertently bully the dogs. Uh, they're not at all conflict averse. So when they do have conflict a lot, when they have conflict, since they're big and strong, they generally win, you know. And so like uh, 
when I come out here, I was just telling you earlier, you know, we have to have a certain ratio. We have a ratio of like labs and golden doodles to any kind of Malinois or other, you know, uh, like guard dog, aggressive type dog that you might run into because it's, they're hard to manage, you know. So I love Trump. He's a good dog. And as long as I'm watching him, he's, he's fine with other dogs, you know. But if I'm not watching, if I take my eye off on him for just a minute, and some young dog comes in here and bucks up on him and, 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 and you know, like tries to play that rank game with him, bam, Trump puts him in his place. And that's not such a big deal here. Uh, you know, Trump has pretty good bite inhibition and he's not too bad about like really hurting the other dogs, but he ain't averse to whooping one. You know what I'm saying? He's not a dog to be trifled with. And uh, uh, so like I'm just careful about who I put him around. But when you go to the dog park, you can't control who's there. And then uh, another big thing is like, uh, if you go to the dog park and your dogs have some kind of rank disagreement and uh, your dog's bigger and stronger and more physical, more athletic and kind of gets the better of it, look guys, they can draw in all the other dogs and it can turn into a big mess. You get into conflicts with the other people that own the other dog. The Malinois are so quick and so strong that a lot of times they'll bite another dog. Now you've got to run. It's after work because when do you get a chance to go to the dog park? Uh, you know, it's after you, you, you know, have got home. And, and so you had to go to the emergency vet clinic. And if your dog puts a hole in another dog, of course, they're going to want to go to the emergency vet clinic and they're going to want no expense spared. Right, so it might just be a little old hole from a little, just a little, just a little basic uh, disagreement between dogs, and that costs you three or four, five thousand dollars. And again, getting back to these email sheets that I have, whatever I did with them, like we get that all the time. Hey, Stony, my Malinois uh, cut another dog's flank. Hey, Stony, my Malinois cut another dog's ear. Hey, Stony, my Malinois uh, 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 jumped up on uh, Granny and knocked her down. Okay, that happens. Right? That's what they do. They're big, strong, athletic dogs, and they have a tendency towards being aggressive and bullying. You know? Now, if you take those tendencies and you get them fixated and moving in the right direction, then they're awesome. In the dog business, we have a saying, you know, like, best dog, worst dog. Oftentimes, when somebody emails you or comes for a consultation, and they're describing the worst dog they've ever seen in their life, the worst dog they've ever had, for a dog trainer, that's the best dog. You know, so like for me, when people come here and they say, oh, listen, I had this other dog and it is perfect. Generally, what they mean is that dog was kind of lazy and didn't do much at all. <laughs> it had naturally good manners. And when they're describing a dog that's jumping up on the counters and, 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 and on top of their car and running around all day and wanting to fetch, bringing balls back and dropping them in their lap, then like it's a nightmare to own as a civilian. But as a dog trainer, it's awesome right because that means we're going to be able to get up every day and get lots of repetition in and what dog training built on is built on correct repetition okay so a dog like trump for for me he's a pretty good dog you know for my buddy neil right now who just went to work for the railroad in this last year and he's working 70 80 hours a week he can't even have him at his house it's going to be a while before he gets settled well enough so i can give the dog back to him you know and uh, i mean me and neil's buddy so i keep the dog for free but uh if uh you know if 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 I wasn't keeping him for free, you know, then, uh, then Neil wouldn't be able to keep the dog, right? So you got to be able to think about that, guys. So do you or do you not want a Malinois? I don't know, right? All I can tell you is that if you want a dog that's super athletic, that's super pattern cognizant, that lives a long time, that's healthy, and has a natural tendency towards developing an in-group and an out-group, in other words, has a natural tendency towards being a, a, a guard dog, right? Uh, and you have the time to manage it properly, they are the best dog ever. If you don't have all that stuff, then they're the worst dog you could have. Because what you're going to do is you're going to be sending somebody like me emails about why is the dog biting you? Why is it biting your neighbors? Why did it kill your neighbor's cat? Why did it tear up your leather sofa? Why did it tear up the inside of your cars? Why did it jump off uh, uh, the, the deck on the second floor of your house trying to get into the swimming pool? Because that's what they do. So should you buy one? I don't know. You know, here's what I would say. Go out, meet some of them, be around some of them, and uh, like just spend some time with them. And then you can kind of narrow your, narrow your decision down to whether you want a Malinois type dog. Because they're all really the same. Belgian Shepherds, Dutch Shepherds, German Shepherds, they're all very similar. And once you've kind of decided if you like that type of dog, then you start to subdivide. Do you specifically want a German Shepherd? If so, what kind? Do you specifically want a Dutch Shepherd? If so, what kind? right and then you like if you decide you want an actual malinois right then you, you go okay there's these 10 guys that breed malinois that i like fawn black mask right and and pick one that's going to suit you pick a breeder that's going to suit you and then 
Like spend some time with those puppies and pick a puppy that's going to suit you, right? And yeah, that's what's going to give you the best chances of being successful, right? And then if you want a, a dog and you don't care how it looks, then you just go hang out with guys that judge dogs based on like how, how, how physically and mentally uh, adept the dogs are and how much they like to chase and bite stuff and just don't even pay attention to what the dog looks like. Okay, And I fall somewhere in the middle. I can't have a flop-eared dog. That drives me crazy, right? Uh, but I'm not so interested in how they look that I would let how they look get in the way of uh, influence me as it relates to their ability to do physically and demanding tasks and show me that they have a lot of drive and a natural tendency towards being protective of my family my property okay all right so i hope that helps you guys uh and uh <laughs> you can just keep sending me emails if you want i can't read them all but eli does and maybe we'll make a follow-up video on this i'll see you later